These islands are subject to a kind of traditional magical law which regulates relations of exchange and is known by the name of Kula Ring. Objects made from spondylus shells called solava are passed round clockwise and the muwali, which are made from white conical shells, are passed around anti-clockwise. The Kula circle includes the islands of Trobriand, Muyua, Luisiade, Samari, and the De Entrecasteau. When the Sulava or the Muali leave a village, it may be years before they return, and then just for a few days. But the fact they have traveled around the entire circle gives them great value. On board the canoes, decorated in all their finery, the delegation of a village sets out with the Kula objects to visit villages on the other islands and make ritual and commercial exchanges. A new lasting relationship will be born among the different villages they visit. Apart from the trade dealings, the Kula ring ensures good relations among the different tribes. The Kula canoes have nothing to do with fishing. They are large and can carry up to 14 people. They have both sails and oars, and the launch of one is a very special event in the village. Before they set out to sea, different rituals are performed so that the canoes will be properly protected by the spirits. The Kula also transmits the Mwasila, which is an entire system of teaching on behavior and ways of being and acting. It is passed down from generation to generation. Mwasila is the knowledge of magic which is essential if a village is to form part of the Kulan ring. among the over 1,400 islands of Papua has attracted the attention of experts of all times and from all disciplines. Though they were traditionally considered ferocious, bloodthirsty peoples, the island of Papuans have always had institutions for establishing relations of fraternity among each other. Ancestral laws and codes which conditioned their lives and made peace possible. Though they also had strict, implacable measures against foreigners, who dared set foot in their territories. Today, the islands of Papua are one of the most beautiful natural surroundings in the world. And as in so many other places, they are rapidly assimilating the dominant Western culture. Their customs are abandoned and their beliefs distorted through the influence of the over 100 different churches which preach religious doctrines from the other side of the world. Little by little, the imported gods are taking the place of the gods that were born of the mystic experiences of the people themselves. One Western expert who was drawn to these islands was the British anthropologist of Polish origin, Bronisław Malinowski, who, from 1914, spent four years in the Trobriand Islands. He studied the way of life of these people, and especially the freedom in their sexual relations. 
He published a number of studies on free love in the South Seas, which scandalized traditional European society. Banyan from northern New Britain put the spirits of the forest to the test of fire. The initiated have spent almost the entire day hidden in the forest, invoking the supernatural beings that live in the depths of the jungle. Their wooden masks are like the face of a duck. That is the image they have of the spirits. A group of musicians beat a wooden dice with long hollow canes, making a monotonous percussive rhythm. It is they who direct the actions of the spirits, which dance around a large fire made by the women in the center of the square. They give the orders, successively changing the beat of the rhythm. The spirits obey their wishes. The test that demonstrates this domination is to pass through the fire, walking across the burning embers. The preparation of the costumes of the initiated is a painstaking task requiring a great deal of time. The branches and leaves, which must entirely conceal their bodies so they cannot be recognized, have to be cut that same day so they are green and do not burn. The paintings with which they decorate their bodies are made from natural pigments collected in the jungle. Each initiate dresses and paints himself in a particular way to represent specific gods which everyone knows. A circular piece of wood placed in the navel ensures that the spirit that possesses the initiate cannot escape. They believe that these creatures from the other world enter and leave through the navel. of the Tulai, who consider them to be an inferior group. Their customs and habits are rapidly being wiped out by the Christian sects, and possibly in just a few years' time, it'll be difficult to witness this fire dance. That is the fate of many of these peoples who are irresistibly attracted by Western technology. But the price they pay is high. Loss of roots and culture makes them unhappy. But once that road has been taken, there's no turning back. Perhaps the oldest members are the only ones who realize the social disaster that forgetting your own culture represents. Our world is increasingly smaller and more uniform, and the only way of life seems to be that exported by the West. But we mustn't fall into the trap. With the natural resources of our planet, only the rich countries can live the way they do. There's not enough for everyone. 
And yet we continue to encourage distant peoples to aspire to a Western style of living. Peoples who will probably never be able to live the way we do. Perhaps one day these customs, born from the land in which they live, will be revived and again give meaning to their existence. Meanwhile, we will continue to witness the systematic destruction of cultures that could have taught us many things.